The next speaker is uh, from University of Naples, Stefano, oh sorry, Mer Congiliano. Um, and he's uh, talking about enabling virtualization on RISC V microcontrollers. Please, the stage is yours. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, hello everyone. My name is Stefano Mercogliano, and I am a PhD student from the University of Naples. Today I'm going to talk to you about uh, our latest project about the um, virtualization on RISC-V microcontrollers. Now, first of all, um, uh, nowadays, industrial related research is going towards the direction of co the consolidation of multiple real time uh, application and operative system on single boards, and that's true for many application scenarios such as automotive, aerospace, industrial defense, many more. Now, the goal is to optimize a specific parameter, which is a composite parameter, also referred to as swap C, which stands for size, weight, power, and cost. And one of the possible solutions for that is the embedded virtualization which is usually achieved by means of application processes and ad hoc tailored hypervisors, for example, partitioning based hypervisors such as PAO and Jailhouse. Now, um, one first question is why virtualizing microcontrollers? Now, first of all, uh, despite providing a powerful virtualization hardware support, application processors leads to some non-negligible downsides with regards to embedded virtualization or to the uh, specific workloads we are trying to virtualize. For example, we have an increase in power consumption, and that happens because the processors uh, actually have a larger area, so they, uh, they are just bigger chips, so they consume more. They also have more components on chip. Uh, these components can be, for example, multiple level of caches, uh, an out-of-order pipeline, some branch predictors, TLBs, all that kind of stuff uh, increase the power consumption, but also decrease the predictability. Um, and, uh, and so it, it will lead, they will lead to challenges in the certification process. Of course, you can disable some of those, but in that case, you will have inefficiency in the resource usage, and still, those components will be on the hardware, and so they will still um, consume some static power. Uh, then. Microcontrollers are actually very cheap, so why should we care about virtualizing them if we can just buy more of them? And there are some answers to this. For example, we have some advantages in scalability. It is much more easier to deploy, um, to deploy software rather than integrating multiple, uh, multiple chips on the same silicon. Uh, moreover, we have some uh, advantages in uh, software integration, porting, and even updating, and also some, some benefits in terms of reliability, availability, and communication for tightly coupled machines, which are machines on the same core. Now, uh, virtualizing a microcontroller is not exactly something, uh, something totally new, because we have had some examples in literature. Uh, for example, on ARM-based systems, we can use the memory protection unit to provide some sort of virtualization. However, uh, some drawbacks are expected. For example, there is a trade-off between performance and isolation. Why? Well, because uh, if you want to isolate more guest virtual machines, you need to deprivilege them to isolate them by means of the MPU. Otherwise, but that would, of course, mean that you are losing performance. And the other way around is, uh, uh, is also, uh, that's why it's a trade-off, because you can uh, not deprivilege, but in that case, you will not have isolation. Uh, there is going to be an efficient trap handling in general. Also, you cannot have overlapping address, and that's true because uh, the guests are running on uh, physical memory. And uh, also, the, there is a high overhead for context switch, and there is a, a high input output latency, because, for example, if you uh, receive an interrupt from a peripheral, you have no idea uh, which uh, uh, guest is the target for that specific interrupt. So, uh, is it possible to use more hardware to actually improve the virtualization of microcontrollers? And the answer is, well, kind of. For example, uh, on uh, the ARMA microcontrollers, it is possible to use the trust as an M, and there are some works that try to use it. Now, in this case, the trust world can host the hypervisor, and you can also host the context of non-running virtual machine in the trust world. And that, of course, provides some benefits in terms of isolation and performance, but it's not the definitive solution. Uh, to that end, ARM introduced the first hardware virtualization extension for physical memory cores, which are the uh, Cortex-R from the specification uh, 8. Um, and they achieved this uh, virtualization by adding a new privilege level, which is the EL2 level, and also providing a second level of MPU. Now, uh, what do we have on RISC-V right now? Now, uh, first of all, RISC-V microcontrollers are, um, can achieve some kind of memory protection, 
by using the EPMP or the PMP that can be programmed by the, by the code running in machine mode, which can be, for example, on our real-time operative system, or it can be a firmware. And that way, you can isolate your tasks uh, and lock some um, privilege code regions. Uh, however, this is not enough to provide virtualization, so to protect VMs, uh, for similar reasons to, uh, to, to the reason why, um, why uh, ARM microcontrollers cannot do it. Uh, also, recently, uh, some proposals have been explored. For example, uh, but the most of, uh, this is an example of what has been discussed, but mainly they, they uh, focus on, the sec on security, on a trusted zone-like approach, and this is not enough for uh, supporting virtualization because virtualization is, is a bit more than just isolation. So this is a brief summary of what uh, I described to you in a couple of words. Um, I, and there is the last column, which is about a possible RISC-V extension for microcontrollers virtualization. And so let's go and let's see what I have for you. Uh, okay, so first of all, our goal is to design a hardware mechanism to efficiently support microcontroller virtualization on RISC-V architectures. So um, um, the hypothesis is that both, both hosts and guests are physical memory systems, so they support machine mode, machine and user mode, and we're also working on a supervisor mode without the virtual uh, memory. Uh, however, these virtual machines are not going to be general purpose virtual machines, but they are going to be uh, to host a specific class of applications and workloads such as bare metal applications and real-time operative systems, which are not exactly like Linux. This implies a focus on reliability and the resource and memory usage. Now, these are uh, some requirements we, uh, we lay out. They are similar to the uh, requirements of classical virtualization from Popek and Goldberg, but I, I just want to highlight uh, a couple of them. For example, uh, the number five, predictability. So we want the design to minimize the non-determinism because of the specific application we are dealing with. Uh, and also, uh, the, we have the requirement of equivalence and memory transparency. So we want the virtual machine, the guest, uh, not to be modified. So we, know, we do not want to modify instructions and not even the addresses using by that virtual machines. And that's the requirement of memory transparency. So let's go to the actual proposal. We have, uh, let's say, some possible solutions. Now, first of all, uh, the main idea is that, well, let's Let's mimic what ARM, what ARM does. Uh, and to do that, we are mimicking the hypervisor extension from RISC-V. So the idea is to, in this case, split the machine mode into, um, let's say, an emulated machine mode and a root machine mode. Now, in uh, the virtual machines, so the guest, as you can see from the picture, we run in the EM mode, while the hypervisor will run in the RM mode. Now, we will need some, a replica, of, a full of partial replica of the control and status registers. Every time a guest OS tries to use the machine mode CSRs, um, the accesses will be redirected to the um, EM CSRs, while the root machine mode will hold the original machine mode registers, and we'll uh, add some new CSRs to provide some optional features. Also, one of the, uh, of the main points here is the, is the memory protection, because uh, if we add a new, uh, a new level, of, of, um, a new level of a new layer of the hypervisor, we need to provide uh, protection between the guests. Uh, but at the same time, we want to provide some sort of unmodified execution, and to do so, we also need a mechanism that we call the relocation, which is, well, sort of a lightweight mm, uh, virtual memory. But let me explain. Now, virtual machines are compiled to run on a specific memory layout. Uh, so once we want to deploy virtual machines on these systems, we have two options. First of all, we can perform some sort of static relocation, so we can modify the code, and we can, uh, uh, in the case of uh, overlapping address for different virtual machines, but of course, in, the, in that case, we need, uh, if we want to change the configuration, we need to, um, to reprogram the entire configuration, so we need to restart the entire system. So we have not flexibility, and we cannot dynamically uh, allocate a VM or make some updates on the, on the running virtual machine. And so the question, can we provide a dynamic mechanism? This is actually lighter than virtual memory, so it is not virtual memory. We can do something like that by uh, using segmentation. And why? Mm, a single level of segmentation, because of the nature of the workloads we are using. Now, first of all, if you try to, to, um, to figure some uh, the, the memory layout of, of a guest system, it is going to be a sparse memory, because you are going to have a region for, for the code, a region for the data, and some smaller region for the, uh, for the peripherals. Um, so you're going to have some segments which are going to be variable in size and very small in number compared to pages, for example. Also, 
um, the segments are all allocated at once at deploy time of a virtual machine, because virtual machine, in this case, they host a real-time operative system, so will be bounded in the memory they will require. So they will, they will not require a new, uh, new memory, dynamic memory allocation. They won't be swapped in memory, and the segments will not be moved around. Um, so based on this observation, we can say that if once we allocate a virtual machine, that virtual machine will use a some set of memory addresses, and they will not use any other uh, virtual addresses, any, any other physical addresses. This means that we can get most of all the benefits of the segmentation without the problem of, for example, defragmentation. So we are not going into the, um, into the, the bad things of segmentation. Uh, so, what is the second idea? The second idea is to provide the second level of protection, and uh, we can do like ARM does, for example. So, let's just add a second PMP. And that can provide, of course, the isolation for guest OS. But let's also add this mechanism of relocation that I described to you uh, based on the observation uh, before. And in this case, we have the, the physical memory relocation. Now, it can be implemented as a simpler uh, second stage of the PMP by also using um, an offset. Uh, to translate the, uh, the base address, or we can use a, a compressed guard try solution. Of course, we want it to have a minimal impact on the performance of the system and on the requirements I listed before, and in, it is also possible to uh, turn off the relocation um, approach if you prefer a static approach, and in that case, you can uh, just see it as a second level of protection, which is still required. Now, this is the first approach. This is the table-based. Um, it is very simple. You have a second table, and this second table is going to be programmed by the hypervisor, so it is transparent and invisible to the, to the guest uh, operative system. However, this will, uh, the, this will join the context of the, of, of the virtual machine, uh, unless you have enough entries to, uh, to translate, to host all, the, uh, all the, 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 the relocation for all the virtual machines running on the systems. Uh, we assume that's not the case, so the, this PMR will join the context of the virtual machine. Um, also, this, this solution uh, can be very costly in hardware because you, the PMP is, is usually very, uh, very expensive for a microcontroller, so having two of them is actually not very easy. And also, if you have the SPMP, for example, you're going to have three tables in the context. Um, and so this is another downside, but in this case, you will not add any, any other latency, extra latency. Now, a second more complex approach is using um, a Radix try based approach, which can look like a page table uh, and a page walker, but it is not exactly the same because based on the observations before, for example, sparse memory, we can use a compressed Radix try that allows us to skip some of the levels of the tree, um, reducing its, uh, its depth. Uh, moreover, we can also use uh, some techniques uh, to further compress every single table um, by uh, basing on the fact that the, the memory is sparse and that we're not going to require more segments, so it is possible to have, a, uh, to, to have a very compressed solution that can fit on a memory on chip. So with this approach, we are going to have uh, technically uh, an extra latency for every single memory access, which is not good, but we, it is a much more flexible approach. Uh, and another possible solution is to also this, um, this uh, structure, if, it, if it's kept in memory, maybe an on-chip memory, uh, it will get out of the context of the virtual machine. It is also possible to use a, a hybrid approach, uh, but I will not discuss it today. Uh, now, finally, the third idea is a fine-grained resource partitioning. So, um, uh, now, it is based on the observation that uh, embedded virtualization proved to be very effective when using a partitioning-based approach. Uh, when you partition resources, you minimize the interference at the cost of, of, um, of resource usage uh, inefficiency. Um, but the resource, the resource partition mechanism that we thought about can partition the, the host resource as a fine grain. For example, you can partition the rec file, the PMP, or the PMR, uh, pr minimizing interferences and providing a better re resource usage as long as guests can run with a subset of host physical resources. And how to partition these resources is up to the hypervisor. Now, this is the final table uh, that outlines all the points. Some are kind of, uh, kind of still uh, yellow because we are still working on that. In fact, we have still much to do. That's the problem of the context switch. So the partitioning mechanism can reduce the context size because we can, reduce, uh, the, we can partition the tables, so we can reduce, reduce the context size. However, um, probably it would be good to have some mechanism to alleviate the burden of the context switch, uh, such uh, new, ex new instructions or some new CSRs. Also, uh, all the, the stuff about um, interrupts and uh, I.O. shall be explored. For example, should we modify the click and the click? Uh, what about shared memories? They could be used to abstract communication channels. And what would the IOPMP and the IOPMR? 
Also, what about caching? Should we use cache coloring? And basically, that's it. Uh, we are now working on our first proof of concept, and we will be working on the, on the IBEX score from low risk to start with. So thank you. Thank you. So I guess sorry. I ran out of time. So, so no questions? <laughs>